Hello and welcome back to part 2 of tutorial 5. I'm going to be moving at a pace during this tutorial to try and keep it within 10-12 minutes. Um, so very quickly what I'm doing is I've cancelled the old virtual machine Satisfy 1, I've created a brand new clean minimal installation which I've now called Satisfy 2 and I'm now going to canter through how to install Apache, MySQL, PHP and an FTP daemon on there so that we can use this server in tutorial 3 to move files onto and to actually see how we can save that as a flex image. So how do we get onto this machine? We've just created it, that's where we left the last one off, so we go to devices, passwords, that brings up the root password here, Satisfy2. We can take that into our buffer and now I can move on to terminal and SSH to this server. Oops, I'm going to need its IP address as well. Let's go back to the device list. One five nine. 8.14.163 because the first time we've ever logged on to it we're asked to say yes which I have now I'll put the password in and there we go so there is whoops we're now on the virtual machine so first thing we want to do is do a yum update to update the existing operating system that's on there it's going to go out and see what mirrors are available. There's a list of packages that's going to update. We're going to say yes. This takes about about 20, maybe 30 seconds to actually run through this. I think the second package um, is actually the large one and that takes a little bit of time to do and then it just races through the rest. There we go and it should just stream through the rest very very quickly indeed yeah okay right so now our operating system is up to date we want to install a HTTPD server an Apache web server say yes okay service I'm just gonna start that service up Oops. With one less P. So now I can take our IP address and go to that uh, web server and it should be in our other window up and available and tell us Apache is there. So that's it's that simple to install Apache on the web server. Okay next thing we want to do is get MySQL on there if you don't know it it's uh, now on by Oracle but it's a community edition that I'm going to be using on Linux database server so I'm going to do a yum install of my SQL server again yes start the service Excellent, so MySQL is up and running. There are a few extra little things you need to do before you finish off this end of the task. So there is a fantastic script, I think it's called secure underscore installation. If you run this script, currently there's no root password. So we're gonna set one. Okay. I want to remove anonymous users of this database and I want to not allow root to log in remotely. I'm also going to remove the test data database that it comes with um, as standard. Reload the privilege tables and it's there. So now we should be able to, oops, now we've got to start the service. Um, So I'm just going to restart that so it takes all those changes and now I'm going to MySQL user root 
it should, well, A, it's required a password, and B, it's asked me for that. And if I show the databases that are there, the test database is gone. Excellent. Um, next thing is to install uh, PHP. And PHP MySQL to create the connections between the two. Once that's done, we want to um, put a, an FTP service on here. Um, I'm just going to also check back on our Apache web server. Yeah, okay. If we now do a service. Um, I'm going to restart the HTTP service because we've actually installed PHP now. Um, I'm going to go back here. That's fine. Now, in theory, if I edit a new file, um, hopefully, um, this is a PHP file. I'm just going to call PHP info. Hopefully, when we go back up here, we can see Apache is running. Now we can see PHP is running. Excellent. So, PHP, MySQL. Um, again, if you go back in here, we should see a PDO somewhere down in our list here. MySQL, there we go. So I've seen that, and there's PDO, and the drivers are installed for MySQL and PDO MySQL. Excellent. So everything's running as we would have liked. The last thing I'm going to do is, is do an install of a, an FTP server. And so that's VSFTPD. I'm going to say yes to that. We also need an FTP client, so yum install uh, FTP. Okay. We do need to do a little piece of work now, which is in etc, if I remember rightly, vsftpc. Sorry, that was my phone going. Uh, in the conf file, anonymous enable. It comes with this as standard. We don't want to have that. So I'm going to say no. We want to check local enable is there. And then we want to find cheroot, which is this line here. And we want to uncomment this to jail everyone into their specific area. I don't know who's trying to get a hold of me. Um, and that's it. Now we want to start the service. Excellent. So now, when we go to this machine, I should be able to see that there's an FTP server running. It should ask me for a username and password. Yes, there it is. Okay, so we don't have a username and password, so let's add a user. And give this user a password. Ignore the uh, bad password stuff. If I now log in as that user, there we go. So the FTP server is there. The very last thing we want to do, of course, is if I reboot this machine now, none of these services are going to be available. So what we want to do is uh, add these to the config. So we want to check config. Um, whoops, if I could spell. Uh, v S F T P D on. We want to do the same with... Um, HTTPD, we want to have that on, and we want MySQL. So, 
so now on a reboot they will all restart and that's pretty much it I know it was a hell of a canter through this but that is now a standard for me Linux Apache MySQL PHP with an FTP daemon service running on there uh, installed and configured in what 12 13 minutes um, thank you very very much my name is Eamon Killian and stay around for part three